Leia here from LeiaFruitSci.com, and in this video, we'll continue our acid base discussion by looking at how to understand the strength of an acid or base using Ka or pKa values and plain old logic. You can find this entire series on my website along with my acid base practice quiz and cheat sheet at LeiaFruitSci.com slash acid base. Remember in Gen Chem, you looked at Ka and pKa values for the purpose of doing lengthy, tedious, and annoying calculations. In organic chemistry, you just need to understand the concepts so that you can rank the numbers that you see rather than doing any calculations. But in order to understand the logic, we first have to review the math, not for the sake of doing it, just for the sake of understanding. In Gen Chem, you learned that the acid dissociation constant, Ka, is equal to the proton or H plus concentration. You can also see this written as H3O plus, same thing, because water will pick up a free proton in solution. A minus, which is the conjugate base, divided by the concentration of the initial acid, or HA. A is your molecule, by itself it's negative, and with a proton attached, it's neutral because the proton is positive. We're not doing any calculations, so we don't even care right now about the acid and conjugate base. Instead, we want to look at the relationship between that Ka. Notice that because Ka equals H plus times other numbers, the Ka value is directly proportional to the H plus concentration. How does H plus relate to acids and bases? The H plus concentration is the acid concentration. The more H plus you have, the stronger your acid, the less H plus you have, the weaker your acid. So if we have a high value for Ka, that means we have a high H plus concentration, giving me a strong acid, as opposed to having a low value for Ka, which is a low proton concentration, giving me a weak acid. So high Ka is strong acid, and low Ka is weak acid. Another equation that you covered in Gen Chem is that pKa is equal to negative log Ka. We're not going to solve this, we don't have a calculator, we're not doing logs, but what we want to recognize is that the negative is going to flip the equation. So if the Ka is high and you apply that negative log to it, the pKa is going to be low. And if the Ka is low, the pKa is going to be high. So they are inversely proportional, or you can think of it as the pKa is proportional to 1 over the Ka, the inverse. Going back to our trend, if we have a high Ka, that means we're going to have a low pKa, and when we have a low Ka, we're going to have a high pKa. So in review, a high Ka or low pKa gives you a strong acid, and a low Ka or high pKa gives you a weak acid. And this is great if you're given two acids or bases and their Ka or pKa values and asked to compare. But what if you look at your exam and you're told to compare the acidity of ethanol to, say, ethanamine? So what's the Ka or pKa? No idea. Did your professor leave that off the exam? No. In organic chemistry, you're going to have to be able to rank the molecules based on looking at them, based on writing out the acid-base equation, comparing the acids, comparing the conjugate bases, and then using a list of trends to determine which is more stable or less stable, and using that to determine the stronger or weaker acid. And yes, I'm going to give you the five factors and explain that to you, but memorization is not enough. You have to understand why something is more stable and why something is less stable to be able to answer these acid-base questions. And when you're trying to understand molecules, I want you to give them human characteristics. Just imagine these molecules are like people and they behave like people you know, then you can predict their outcome. So we'll use my golden rule for understanding organic or really any scientific reaction. And the rule is as follows. Happy, stable, unreactive, unhappy, unstable, reactive. To help you understand this, I want you to picture a day where just everything went wrong. Your alarm didn't go off and you overslept. You get to the bus stop just as the bus is pulling away and have to wait half an hour. You show up late to class. You left your assignment at home. There was a pop quiz and you missed it. And just any little thing that can go wrong went wrong. By the time you go to the cafeteria for lunch, you are in a terrible, terrible mood. Now someone walks by and they bump into you. 
What do you do? Well, you're in such a bad mood, you are so angry, you're dying to vent on someone, and you just lose your head. You start yelling at them to watch where they're going and whatever obscenities come out of your mouth. Now I want you to picture another day. You just got your organic chemistry results, you aced the class, the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, it is just a beautiful, beautiful day. You go to the cafeteria to pick up breakfast and someone bumps into you. Are you gonna snap at them? Probably not, you're in such a good mood, they say, I'm sorry, like, don't worry about it. So what happened here? In the first scenario, you were unhappy. Because you were unhappy, you were unstable, you were liable to explode. And when that person bumped into you, you were reactive, you just lost it, you exploded on them. Now picture that second scenario where you were having a really good day, you were happy. Because you were happy, your energy level, like your anger energy level was low. You were relatively stable. And when someone bumped into you, you were not reactive because you did not have the need to vent or to attack someone given that you were so happy. Acids and bases are the same exact way. So let's say I have an acid. We'll use HA as a generic acid and yes, we'll use real examples soon. Say we have an acid that is HA and it breaks up to give H plus and A minus. H plus is a proton, we're not gonna look at that. The flaw that I find with the acid-base chapter in most textbooks is they always talk about the proton, how easily the proton wants to leave and the proton this, the proton that. It's a proton, forget about it. What we're looking at is everything around the proton, its desire to grab that proton, its ability to give up that proton. Forget the proton, look at everything else. We formed a conjugate base. A minus is a conjugate base. You have to ask yourself, is this A minus stable? Is this A minus happy? If the A minus is stable, it has absolutely no desire to attack anything and specifically attack an H plus or attack a molecule that has an H plus. And so if that A minus is stable, and it doesn't want to attack the H+, plus. that means it's going to stay put, it's not going to react, and it's going to stay where it is. Now, if you recall, an acid is only as good as its ability to give up that H+, plus. or simply, an acid is only as good as its ability to stay as a conjugate base. So, if that A- is not going back to reform that acid, that HA will continue breaking up and breaking up and breaking up, and every time you form a happy A minus, you have another H plus sitting in solution, increasing your concentration of H plus, and therefore you have a much stronger acid. In other words, what is a strong acid? A molecule that will happily give up its H plus because it is very happy and comfortable as an A minus. Now let's think of this in the opposite way. If you have an acid that breaks apart, to give you an A minus, and that A minus is so unhappy having given up that A plus, it is unstable and therefore very, very reactive. So reactive that it will lash out and attack that H plus, reforming that HA. If an acid does not stay dissociated and instead reforms that HA, you're not putting H pluses into solution, and that means your H plus concentration is very, very low. That makes it a weak acid. So a weak acid is something that if it dissociates is so unstable it wants to reassociate. In other words, the weak acid is one that does not want to act as an acid. It does not want to dissociate. And why is that? Because the A- is unhappy, unstable, and it does not want to stay an A- it wants to reform that HA. So what are we looking for? When we're analyzing that A-, there are five things you want to look for, and the mnemonic for that is CARIO. The CARIO stands for charge, atom holding the charge, resonance, inductive effect, and orbitals. And we'll discuss each of these five in the upcoming videos, and you can find each of these videos along with my acid base practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website, layerforsci.com slash acid base. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. 
After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.